In the midst of an economy like this, people are wondering, how am I going to pay for this? How are we going to get that? Uh -huh. How are we going to get this? How? Well, the question is not how, but who? And we're going to talk about that coming right up. Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory. We're Pastors George and Terry Pearsons, and we are thrilled to be with you today to be able to talk about how good God is in the midst of the economy. It's a good thing that God is good. <laughs> it is a good thing, isn't it? Yes. Well, <clears throat> we've been talking about God's supply chain. And let me remind you that if you're interested in uh, getting the outlines to the, all the sermons that we're talking about here, the messages, just go to kcm.org, click onto the picture of Pastor Terry and myself, and these notes will be available to you. You can print them out. Pastors, you can print these out, distribute them to your whole church. I mean, you can have a seminar on God's supply chain right in your own church. So we've been talking about so many things concerning this. And today, th this is a powerful, powerful subject that we're speaking about. And that is God is our source. Yes, He is. He is our source. Now, <clears throat> I'm a collector of fine words from the Lord. <laughs> yes, you are. I have quite a collection at home, and I'd like to read you one. And this one is from Brother Copeland, November the 11th of 2010. Now, I know where we were. We were in the, the D.C. Victory Campaign because that's right around the time that we're, that we're supposed to be there. And so he gave this word. And it is, don't look to the government for your supply. Don't look to other people for your supply. No, pastors, don't look to your congregation for your supply. Jesus is our source. The blessing of Abraham and the word of God are our supply. Isn't that a good word? It's a great word when you look at this. The, what is the blessing of Abraham? Abraham is the father right. of our faith. Faith yep. is the key yep. The key element here, the blessing that was promised to Abraham, Abraham received it by faith. So when we talk about the blessing of Abraham, we walk in it, we receive it the same way he did by faith, who considered not the things around him. He didn't look at the shelves. He didn't look at his wife that couldn't have a child or himself. Right. He looked to the right. promise of God. And right. that's, it's simply put, that's how we walk in that blessing. That is, it really is. And... You know, at the top of the program today, we were talking about in the midst of an economy, you know, where is it going to come from? How is it going to come? How are we going to pay these bills? And <clears throat> there are people, and maybe you right now, are facing an overwhelming financial situation. And, and, and the cycle is you look at your paycheck and you look at the needs and then you look at your paycheck. How are we going to pay for this? How are we going to do this? You start thinking of ways I can borrow it from family. I can go do this. I can borrow it from the bank. What are we going to do? And we have to keep coming back to the, to, to the point here that God is our source. He can get it for you. He can locate it for you. And one of the scriptures here, Terry, we talked about this last week, about Jesus feeding the 5,000. Mm -hmm. And this is the message translation of John 6, 5 and 7. The question was asked, where can we buy bread to feed these people? See, there's the question, where? Mm -hmm. Where? Where's Philip, it going to come Philip from? Philip was asking that. <clears throat> Philip was asking that question. <clears throat> where can we buy bread to feed these people? 200 silver pieces wouldn't be enough to buy bread for each person to get a piece. So even there was... No bread to be bought. Right. Not enough money to buy the bread. Right. For all of those, if yep. you had it, if the bread was available, and then what would yeah. be available wouldn't be enough for <laughs> all the people. So no matter where he looked, there was more lack and 
yeah. Jesus was kind of humored by that. He was, and I, I'm thinking to myself as, as we're talking here, 200 silver pieces. Why did he say that? It, is that what they had in the bag? Is that what they carried with them? Is that what? That's is that a pretty what, good supply? Yeah, That's a it good is. Supply. It's a really good supply, and, and he's saying here, he's thinking it. You know. We've got the bag. Now, that's what the King James Version talks about, the supply that Jesus carried you know, with him. But it's both things. Where, where can you buy the bread? You can't go, yeah. there's no bread. And if there was bread, we don't have the money. So I just, that's really, yeah. no matter where he's uh, with or without the money, because sometimes you have all the money <laughs> that it would take, he but was, if the thing you want to buy is not there. He was facing the same quandary that so many people face. Maybe you're facing it right now. This money's not enough to do this, or where are we going to get that? And I'll give you a, a, a Gloriaism that was spoken right here in this studio. And she said, heaven always has a good economy. That is where we receive from. It doesn't matter what's happening in the earth. We're not receiving it from the earth. We are receiving it from heaven. So you want to explain that a little bit? Well, yes, the, that um, he heaven, meaning not, not just a, a planet, but a, a realm, a spiritual yeah. Yeah. realm. And so the transfer has to come from the spirit into the natural. Well, that may sound strange to you, but how do you think people were, the whole of creation? And not only the things of creation, but the system, the way the system works and the provision. It originally was a perfect copy of the spiritual world. So the spiritual world, God himself is the spirit. That was the mother force of creation. How does it go from the spiritual and to the natural, I can use it, it's tangible, by faith. Faith is the way we make the withdrawal. Mm. Faith is the connector between the unseen to the seen. Right. God right. created the world with wisdom, but he did it by faith. He did it. And that's why we emphasize faith <clears throat> so much, and it's not enough to just reference it. You have to feed your faith on on faith food. Yes. You have to feed your faith yes. on the Word of God about the things that you're believing for. You also have to feed your faith about faith mm -hmm. to know what mm -hmm. it is, how to use mm -hmm. it, how to apply mm -hmm. it. And you're always working on that. We never stop doing that. Right. We never stop no. doing that. We go no. back to it all the time. And in doing so, no matter what we need, faith is at the ready to make that transfer. Yeah. And you remember, Terry, when the Lord spoke to you years ago and, and you asked me the question, what would you think about sowing our house to a family? Yeah. <clears throat> I didn't answer her for three years. <laughs> it took that long. But I do remember when I answered her and we were taking off from an airplane, leaving uh, the United Kingdom, coming home from a convention over there in Bournemouth. And when we were taking off, it hit me so hard. I was like, we are going to sow our house. Well, we made the decision to do that, but then I started struggling <clears throat> with where are we going to go? What are we going to do? And I started having these images of living in the car with the kids. <laughs> <clears throat> I would go George. out. There's a couple of times I'd go out at night, drive the neighborhood, <laughs> look for a for sale sign. No. And so what I did, I knew, I knew that I had to get on top of this. I had to get on top of my faith with this. And so... I, I was able to get a set of Leroy Thompson's Money yeah, Cometh Money Cometh, House series. Cometh. It's like 18 cassette tapes back then. And I'm telling you what, I just started, I just started ingesting and ingesting and ingesting and started building my faith and getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And the Lord took care of us. Sure he did. And it, we moved into a house that was twice the size of the one we had. Yeah. And he blessed us. He blessed us. We were, we paid off the first one. We didn't give people a house that had debt on it. Mm -mm. And no. then the Lord just did some miraculous things, moved into another one. We did borrow some money on that one, yeah. some of it. But, oh, we had that paid off lightning fast. We did. And we the did. house that we live in now is bigger than <laughs> that one and better than that one was. And we moved into it, paid, paid for it. Debt free. 
So it was a process. It was a process. Um, yeah. So you build your faith. As, that's the whole point of what I was mm -hmm. saying was you build. It's a process. You build, you build your faith towards this. And don't, the scripture <clears throat> says, David said, I don't exercise myself in things that are too high for me. So don't go out and try to do something because somebody else did. You got to start where, where, you, where you are. And, and you can start with something that's big for where you are, mm -hmm. but don't stop. Don't start with something that's a bigger seed than you know how to handle. Yeah. Because it's not the seed, it's the faith in which you plant it that makes the difference. Right, exactly. And if your faith is not at a place where you can sow that seed and believe for the harvest, then you need to, you need to let the Lord lead you because all of it is a process. So here are a couple of scriptures talking about God is our source. The first one, 1 Corinthians 8, 6, this is the Amplified Classic. It says, yet for us, there is only one God, the Father, who is the source of all things. Praise God. So God is our source. Say that with me three times. God, God is, is my, my source. source. Say it again. God, God is, is my, my source. source. Say it one more time. God, God is, is my source. source. Not the government, not man, not the job. God is is your source. It yes. emanates from there. James 1.17, Amplified Classic, every good gift and every perfect, free, large, and full gift is from above. It comes down from the Father of all. So we see here, every good gift, every perfect gift, it's free, large, full, it's from above, and it comes down. And I like what you said, I never thought about that before oh, a few yeah, moments right. ago. Right. Tell them what you said. About coming down? <clears throat> yeah. So this every gift comes down from the Father. That doesn't mean it falls out of the sky, but it comes down like, right. like something comes down from a father to a son. Another way to say it is it's handed down. Yeah. We're not talking about hand-me-downs like used up, but priceless things, treasure things. Uh, when a father hands down a business, when a father hands down uh, the the heritage yep. he hands down but it's what you inherit right. the scripture talks a lot about inheritance right. it's how it's handed down to us passed over to us given to us right I like that listen to the Phillips translation every good endowment that we possess and every complete gift that we've received must come from above from the father of all lights in whom there is never, never the slightest variation or shadow of inconsistency. There's no double-mindedness about him and there is no shortage and he's not withholding from you. No, you can't have that. You can't have that. You can't have that. No, the father is a giving father. He wants to see his children provided for in the same way that we provided for our children mm -hmm. as they were growing up. And growing up is a key word there, growing up and think there's sometimes right. we think we're ready to handle something and he knows better. He knows that if it's not that right. you can't have it, it's like my children would ask for things like you can have that, but not yet. You learn to do this yeah. first, you handle this, you, you take care of this, you to be a good steward of this so that you have the capacity to handle this bigger, better thing because you'll either destroy that thing or it will destroy you if you're not in a place to be able to handle it. So he takes us again, exactly. the process. Exactly. We grow up in him mm -hmm. and the blessing grows up with us. Yeah, yeah. and it's a momentum, a mm -hmm. faith right. momentum that takes place. Deuteronomy 28, 12, the Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure. I like what these two, oh, these two translations, good. the CEB translation says, <clears throat> he'll open unto you his own well-stocked storehouse. Oh, that's good. <laughs> and then that's this great. one, <clears throat> I believe I mentioned this yesterday, but this one from the message translation, God will throw open the doors of his sky vaults, the sky vaults of heaven are opened up to us. 
And I like what Creflo Dollar says. He said, El Shaddai will demonstrate provisional miracles that are contrary to natural events. El Shaddai is Hebrew and is a name for God. And it, it literally means the breasty one mm -hmm. or the supplier, the life supplier, yep. the nourishment supplier, the everything you need supplier, just like a mother nurses her child. Yes. He is everything you need to sustain, as, as Peter says, life and godliness. Yep. Here's another scripture, familiar one, but don't, don't get so familiar with these scriptures that you inoculate yourself against the truth of that scripture that the Lord wants to bring to you. Don't, don't be saying, don't be saying, don't be saying, oh, I've heard that before. Oh, I've heard that before. No, there's the word of God is alive and it's living and there's more revelation every time you read it. There's more that will come to you about it. And this one, Philippians 4.19, this is the Apostle Paul writing to his partners, the partners who supported him, the partners who sowed into his ministry. And he said, this is the Amplified Classic, and my God will liberally supply Fill to the full your every need according to His riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Now, couldn't we spend time on that one? Yes, we could spend a lot of time. I think one of the things that, that tells you that helps the most is to look at the other side of that. He doesn't meet our needs according to the riches in your bank account. Mm -hmm. He doesn't meet our needs according to the riches of the economy right. or the supply of the, the food chain, the supply chain, or, or any other limitation. He meets his, our needs according to his riches in glory. And the glory, there's no lack in the glory. The, actually, the glory means heavy with everything yes. good. Yes. There is nothing good outside of God, right. George. Right. Everything that is good yep. is in Him, yep. in His glory. <clears throat> yep, absolute. The, the note that you wrote here, everything good is in Him. He is absolute goodness, goodness beyond our comprehension. Yeah, so wow. good beyond wow. our ability <laughs> to fathom it, but we can stretch, yes. we yes. can stretch yes. and get more of it. The Bible in basic English says, and my God will give you all you have need of from the wealth of his glory in Christ Jesus. <sighs> Philip's translation, my God will supply all that you need from his glorious resources in Christ Jesus. You know, that was some um, Keith Moore said, I heard mm. him say years ago, there are many resources, yeah. but God is the source. He is the source. He is the source. Yeah. And yeah. since he, he <clears throat> is the source, he has unlimited <clears throat> resources. And if you're trying to think of, like you said earlier today, uh, where's it coming from? Yeah. Well, how's yeah. it going to? You're thinking only on the basis of your limited knowledge of resources available. Right. But he has resources, earthly resources, natural resources, people resources, and supernatural resources. He is the source of all his resources. I have this Rick Renner translation, and it's so good. I keep it in my Bible next to this scripture. And it's so funny because one day, I don't know what Rick was doing, and he's in Russia, he's pastoring in Russia, and he called me from Russia, and he said, Pastor George, he said, do you, do you have a copy of that translation of Philippians 4.19? I, I need it and I can't find it. <laughs> He's looking for his own translation. <clears throat> so I was able to send it to him right away. And the Rick Renner translation of Philippians 4.19 says this, my God will supply your needs so completely that he will eliminate all your deficiencies. He will meet all your physical and tangible needs until you are so full. You have no more capacity to hold anything else. He will supply all your needs until you are totally filled. And that, that reminds me of filling your gas tank. Yes. God is the filler until they are totally filled, packed full and overflowing to the point of bursting at the seams and spilling over. That ought to do. That's a mouthful right there. It is. That's a mouthful of provision right there. Hey, we've got a few more scriptures to read. You want to do another lightning go round fast, here? Go fast, Okay, go fast. God is the source of our wealth. Genesis 14, 22, Abram said to the king of Sodom, I have raised my hand to the Lord God most high, possessor of heaven and earth. 
that I will take nothing from a thread to a sandal strap, and that I will not take anything that is yours, lest you should say, I have made Abram rich. Genesis 15, 1, Amplified Classic. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am your shield, your abundant compensation. Mm. Your reward shall be exceeding great. That was God's response yep. to Abraham's faith in him. He said, I am your rapidly increasing money supply. That was Leroy Thompson. Yeah. I got that actually from the meeting we had here years mm -hmm. ago. I'm your rapidly increasing money supply, Deuteronomy 8, 18. And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you power to get wealth, that He may establish His covenant, which He swore to your fathers as it is this day. First Chronicles 29, 12, both riches and honor come from you, speaking of the Lord. Riches and honor come from Him. 1 Timothy 6, 17, command those who are rich in this present age not to be haughty nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who gives us richly, richly. all things to enjoy. Praise the Lord. In the very yep. seconds that we have left. Oh, I was here. just going to say, we could read these, but you know what? Yeah. Um, if they'll download the notes, they'll get all okay. of these scriptures. They'll get them. They'll get them. They'll so get, oh, we've got, we actually. We do have time. Have enough, and so I put an example. Breath. Take I, a breath. I, <sighs> okay, go ahead. I got an example about God supplying. God will furnish your house. He will furnish your house. Listen, Proverbs 14, 11, the house of the wicked shall be overthrown, but the tabernacle or the house of the upright shall flourish. And the word flourish means it will grow vigorously, enlarge, and expand. Uh, Psalm 112, verse 3, wealth and riches shall be in your house. Proverbs 3, 33, he blesses the home of the righteous. In Proverbs 24, 3 and 4, through wisdom is a house built, and by understanding is it, it is established, and by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. You know, George, I remember when we were believing for furniture, we got married, we had a table and chairs, we had a bed, we had a bookshelf. <laughs> yes. I had a cardboard box for a dresser, uh, and then we had my, my grandmother's piano she gave us. So there, was, there were no chairs, anything. So I took masking tape and marked out the place in the living room, and I said, don't walk across that because there's a couch coming to go right there. There's a couch coming there. And sure enough, before too long, somebody yep. actually gave us the couch, didn't know we didn't have one. We put it right and there. then the next thing you knew, we were able to buy a new couch yep. and we gave that one eventually and then another one came. So bless the Lord, He's faithful. He's faithful. God is my source. God is my source. Say it with me two times. God, God is, is my, my source. source. One more time. God, God is, is my source. source. Now just praise Him and thank glorify you, Him and thank we Him. Thank you, Lord. Thank, thank you, Lord, Lord, that you're my source. You, you are, are my supply. the source. The source of all things good. Praise God. How are all the shelves empty? Drive two hours away for baby formula? How are we gonna afford the gas? It's time to get your eyes off your limited resources and get your faith on the source of your unlimited supply. Get the God is My Source package by Gloria Copeland and Pastor George Pearsons and find out how God provides everything you need. In fact, God not only wants to meet your needs, He wants you living in the abundance of His blessing. Use the study guide to follow along with the daily audio lessons and take notes. Track your faith goals in the mini book and keep it with you as a powerful pocket-sized scripture reference. Immerse yourself in 70 scriptures about God as your provider. You're a member of the family of God and your heavenly Father has good gifts for you. Renew your mind by the Word of God until you are fully persuaded that God is your source. Request your free God is My Source package from Kenneth Copeland Ministries at kcm.org slash TV special or when you call 800-600-7395. You can thrive in every situation because Jesus is your source and the Word of God is your supply. This free offer is good for 60 days. 
Outside the U.S., shipping charges may apply. Contact your regional office for more information. So we're going to do a pop quiz. And I want you to tell me what our confession is for today. I'm going to give you help. I have a flashcard right here to let you know what we need to be confessing. So let's do this together. Say it. God, God is, is my source. source. And that is the name of the product that we're offering this week on the Believer's Voice of Victory. It's a study that Gloria Copeland and I did 10, 10 days studying God is my source. All of the notes that Gloria and I uh, did during that time. And then also the, this pocket size book called God is My Source with all of the 70 scriptures in it, places where you can write and journal some things and just carry it with you everywhere you go um, and to be able to just keep your mind focused on the fact that God is your source. Request this on kcm.org. It is a great way to grow spiritually and it is a great way for you to develop in your faith. You know, a, another important thing is to not forsake yourself uh, to the assembling of the saints. There's something about it when people who are hungry to know faith, hungry for the Word of God, hungry for the things of the Spirit, come together. Uh, yes, we come together in churches. I mean, we, we're pastors. We understand that. But when we have an opportunity for people from various churches, sometimes from various parts of the country, to come together and, and pastors come together to feed on the Word of God. You know, the Bible shows us that God put in the, uh, the apostle, the prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher, and all of those ministry offices are for the equipping of the saints, but it does you no good if you don't assemble yourself together to see what the Word of the Lord is through that apostle or prophet to minister to you. We have a meeting coming up in Omaha, October the 27th through the 29th. It's a great time. Come be a part of the meeting there with Brother Copeland, Brother Spell, Pastor George will be there and come to an atmosphere that is charged with the spirit of faith. It's a free event. You can go to kcm.org, I believe slash events will get you more information about that meeting. So until then, let's remember that God, God loves, loves you. you. We, we love, love you. And, and Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Find out more about Kenneth Copeland Ministries and how we can help you grow in faith. Visit our website, kcm.org. The Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast study notes will help you dive deeper into these powerful word-based teachings. Get all five days of notes at one time. Use them during the week for your personal study time. Download them free at kcm.org notes. Create a special family devotional time to follow along with the notes as you watch the broadcast. Study the scriptures with your children and begin instilling God's Word now. Use these notes to build your faith library and build up a heritage of faith. Welcome to KCM.org, your study center for victory. Stay focused on truth by reading the devotional from faith to faith and the one-year Bible plan every day. Keep up with culturally relevant articles and free downloads on the blog. Click through interactive issues of the BVOV magazine with links to videos and further reading. Follow along with the question of the day. Face tough questions with answers based firmly on the Bible. Get a faith boost by reading testimonies of real-life success stories from people just like you. KCM.org meets you where you are.